the, the opportunity we have at this time is to determine whether the maker of the motion wishes to do.
The votes cast and delivered to the secretary and counted. We have 247 to suspend and add 30 minutes. We have 173 to not. The motion fails for lack of a two-thirds majority. Thank you very much.
And I spoke up for that, and I asked for all of you to believe the best about each other. And there's a few people here that I think would like everyone to just trust everyone else and just have nothing but chaos here today. I'm here to get our business done, to pass our platform, to elect our officers, and get things done decently and in order. And while we don't agree on everything, I hope we will all use our conscience, just like the governor said, vote your conscience, do what you believe to be right. But let's conduct this business, and let's not try to make this painful for one another. I, I know yesterday I asked, how many of you are first-time delegates? And a great many of you said you were. Over the years, I've seen the first-time delegates that don't come back. They, and I said, why, why, why won't you let me look at you? Because it was so awful last night time. Everybody was arguing and fighting and yelling. So I would ask you all to please be civil with one another. And let's believe the best about each other. And let's be courteous. I've heard a lot of voice raising this morning and a lot of accusations back and forth. And I just would ask that we would stop that. And please do not consider my name for elector. Thank you. I want to start the rules committee, at least get the comment from the rules committee on the uh, determination that we asked them to provide. Point of order. Point of order. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I don't think that it's possible to take a, a proper vote on anything because there's like 15 districts that have a variance in numbers of, of delegates that are seated for this for any vote. And the, the issue hasn't been resolved, so there's quite a few few votes out there that uh, would make a difference in any vote that came across. It's been resolved by the adoption of the report, and I urge you to check with the committee to get an understanding, but we must recognize the action of the body at this time and proceed. Uh, Mr. Mr. Perkery. Narrowly first on the issue that's before us relative to the national committee. And here's my co chair, uh, Lance Roberts. The committee was asked uh, to do something relative to the national committee uh, definitions. And this, con this convention rules committee can't do interpretations. But what we could do was look at the language and clean up the language. So based on historical practice, the language, we could make changes to the wording that would make it clearer what the original intent was and also reflected what the historical practice was. So in that case, uh, in Article 1, Section 7, and this supposedly was going to be shown on the screen, who has control of the computer with, oh. Yes, sir. We have officially 475 delegates seated here. We just had. Sir, sir, you're out of order, the chair. Wow. I'm sorry? We have, four, we have 475 official delegates here. Yes. As I understand. You just announced that 247 voted to suspend and add 30 minutes, and 143 as I think. First of all, give me your name and district. Tom Island, District 10. Thank you. Okay. 247 voted to suspend and add 30 minutes. 143 voted not to. Yes, yeah, the, the, the question of we moved on beyond that, that is no longer appropriate. Thank you. Well, it's 390 voted out of 475. Now, where are the other missing 80 or 90 votes? I move, I make, I'd like to make a motion that you, you hear that we actually, that we actually count the people in the room. I have a second. I made a motion that we count the people, the delegates in the room, because apparently the count is Now, with Mr. Cutler's permission, Mr. Chairman. we will try, try to continue to conduct the business of the convention. And at the request of apparently very many of you, 
we were asked, as I started to say, to do an interpretation. We're not in the business of interpretations, but it, it is. Mr. Chairman. It is our. Weird time. I would like to give the opportunity for everybody to consider what was on the screens, and we'll move on to nominations. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I am in possession of a report of improprieties from members of the Credentials Committee, District 6, Delegate David Eastman. I would move that we recess and hear the report of certain members of the Credentials Committee concerning improprieties downstairs in the lobby in five minutes time. And I encourage every member who would like to hear the information they have to present to follow them there in five minutes time. Thank you very much. Is there a second? All in favor of the motion made by the delegate from District 6 to reset. Those opposed indicates by saying no.
Thanks, folks. I'm Dave Bronson, uh, District 24. This is William Curry, District uh, 15. And uh, we were the Nominations Committee co-chairs. And I also want to introduce Terry uh, Campo. He was our parliamentarian for both things. A great help. Uh, he helped things run uh, run those schools. Uh, uh, we, we had some pretty uh, lively debates, uh, but we got through it here in a reasonable amount of time. I think we're done by about five o'clock last night. Uh, with that, I'd like to turn over to Lynn real quick. We had 39 very passionate, very committed people in the room. We also had 39 very respectful folks in the room. The process was awesome, and we even had some lighthearted moments. I'd like to share one with you if you'll participate. And I want to make sure it's fair. How many of you have ever in your lifetime seen snow? <laughs> Perfect, this is totally fair. Would you call out your answers to two easy questions with enthusiasm? What color is snow? What do cows drink? I would like to nominate Pam Good 
Yes, I can give you this. Pam Good from Delta as National Committee Woman. I would like to nominate Dave Eastman from Palmer as National Committee Man. I would like to nominate Barbara Anders Anderson as Assistant Secretary and Alice Lucchetti from Juno as Secretary. And I also would like to apologize to Debbie Jalabin for not talking with her about the elector position. We didn't feel that we could support her National Committee Woman, but we did want to support her and we didn't have time, so I'm sorry about that. We will go to that comment next. Thank you, sir. 
Right. Um, Roman Romanovsky, District 16. Uh, I was part of the nominations committee. And if you read the uh, nominations report, which was circulated this morning, it says that we would include nominations from the floor. Uh, I believe the interpretation was that everyone that was nominated from the floor, in addition to the nominate, uh, people on the slate already, would have a chance to speak before the general yeah. assembly here. And if we can minimize the amount of discussion, we need to go around that. Thank you. Appreciate the help. Uh, North Mike. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I just, just want to comment on the, the lack of decorum. Uh, I apologize. Thank you. Speaking of lack of decorum, Lawrence Moore, District 26, Eagle River. Um, I just, Chairman, I just want to, uh, I guess, remind you, probably no, no need of reminder, that, that it is at your discretion who is recognized and who is not recognized. We have delegates that are, that are dominating the mics and disrupting the proceedings. I would encourage you to use your discretion at recognizing and not recognizing those delegates who are fallen out of favor with the Chairman. Thank you.
This is not an angry city election. This is run under the Roberts Rules of Order. And if no one gets 50% of the first ballot, we will do a second ballot. Thank you. Mr. Ellett. Point of order, Mr. Chairman. Point of order, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Mr. Chairman, do not our standing rules specifically specify that a plurality vote is necessary for election rather than a majority vote? We will address that later when Ms. Ellis speaking. Well, welcome everyone. And um, I'm very honored to be here standing in front of you. And I'm not normally nervous, but I'm more nervous this morning. So, uh, I am, this is good morning, I am Judy Ellich, and I'm running as Alaska Republican Party Chair. And I don't offer a lot of things, but one thing I know this morning is there is only one, one constant, and that constant is change. And today is a new day, and that change begins today. In writing this speech, I wrote it several times last night and changed it every time. Uh, I needed to think of something that we all share. And I think what we all share are our emotions. We have emotions of the past, hurt, unforgive, uh, unfairness, anger, distrust, and unforgiveness. But we also have emotions of the future. Opportunity, trust, acceptance, respect, community, transparency, and forgiveness. And in your question to my, uh, about what I thought about last night, I'm going to respond this way. Even though I respect everyone's right to protest, I do not I do not appreciate uh, behavior that is disrespectful to all of those t attending and invited guests. There's a time and a place for protest and a proper way to protest, but what happened here last night was not good for our party. I've served in many capacities in the Republican Party since 2003 when I came in from living eight years in rural Alaska. I have been a district chair for two districts. I have been a bonus vote and I'm currently president of the Anchorage Republican Women's Club, which is one of the hearts of the party. But I know that's not really what you want to hear this morning. And if you want to know what I've done, you can look on the, on the table and you can, you can read about me. When someone asked me recently what my vision of the Republican Party was, I immediately thought of a movie that I saw recently. I, it was called Acts of Valor. And if you haven't seen it, you should. I want all the Republican Party, whether serving in leadership, running for office, or participating as members to be like the Marines in that movie. They have honor, integrity, honesty, and bravery. I want to never again elect a president that apologizes to a country, to a country that hides our enemies as far as is, uh, The vision further includes party. Being a party that is respected, welcoming, transparent, and offers fairness and opportunity. One that is a community. Candidates, I want to find candidates and vet them, and I want to be sure they believe in the party platform and are brave enough to stand alone and ne if necessary in the yeah. I want to those candidates, and I want the Republican Party to be the first place those candidates come when help is needed. And then money. I, we have to be able to raise enough money so that the unions will proud, cry foul and the candidates are roping in it. 
elections, electing strong conservative Republicans in the Alaska State Legislature, and we can never have to speak the word coalition again. I believe marriage should be between one man and one woman. I believe the strength of our nation lies with the individual and equal rights, equal justice, and equal opportunity for all.